we recording? I don't even know if it's recording. How the hell are you supposed to know? Oh, we're recording. That's fantastic. What up, peeps? Today, we are going to go over the August 13th, 2013 New York State Algebra Regions. So, if you are outside of New York, still watch this video because math doesn't change that much between state to state, right? And uh, we have around 8.30 to 11.30. Three hours to this region, so that's more than enough time. And we could bang this region out in like an hour. Right? So that's what we're going to do. I, we're going to do the top or the first 10 multiple choice questions today. And we'll keep going. Keep following. Let's do this. Here we go. We got our, our questions up in here. So we're just going to bang right into it. I mean, if you guys have any questions or you want to talk about something, just let me know in the comment box. And uh, we'll get back to you. And maybe we'll make a whole video for you. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? Let's do this. Number one. Which situation describes a negative correlation? So, before we can answer it, we need to know what a negative correlation is. We need to know what, what a correlation is first. So, a correlation is some type of relationship. Right? If two things are correlated, they're related somehow. And they want to know about a negative correlation, a negative relationship. Well, a negative correlation would say, as the first... Why yellow? Like, honestly, any other color would show better than yellow. The first situation, if there is an increase or something goes up, that would influence, if that's situation A, that will influence situation B to go in the opposite direction. Or vice versa, right? Um, so, let's take a look. We'll do some examples. We'll look at them together. Number one. The amount of gas left in a car's tank and the amount of gas used from it. So in situation A, which is the tank's gas, or the amount of gas left in the car's tank, um, and situation B is the amount of gas used from the tank. So let's see what happens as we relate them. So if the amount of gas left in car's tank, let's say that increases, right? Well, let's say it goes down, that's better. So as we drive, da, 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 the car is driving. The gas that's left in the tank, what's happening to it? Is it going up or down? That's right, it's going down. Going down, down. And that means that the amount of gas that's being used as we drive, we use more and more gas. So that means that situation is going up. This right here is negative, isn't it? They're opposite arrows, that's negative. So we know that situation one, that's a big perk, right? That's awesome. That works out. Let's see number two. The number of gallons purchased and the amount paid for the gas. So, let's try this out. If we say we purchase a lot of gas, so say we purchase a lot. As we purchase more and more and more, obviously the amount paid for the gas, is it going down? That would be awesome, right? That would be amazing if we could have 10 gallons is for a dollar. That right there is amazing. And then 20 gallons would be for 50 cents. Oh man, life would be great, wouldn't it? I would be driving to your house to teach you instead of doing it on here. But it's not like that. It's not like that. The number of gallons purchased, as it goes up, the amount you pay also goes up. So we know, let's do that in red, you guys. We know that cannot happen, right? That is not a negative correlation. Number three, the size of the car's tank. 
the size of the car's tank and the number of gallons it holds, well, obviously if you increase the tank size, you increase the amount it holds. Right? So we know that 3 is not correct. And finally, number 4, the number of miles driven. If we increase the amount of miles driven, then the amount of gas, again, I wish that it goes down, right? Because you can drive a long time and no gas would be used up. But we know that's not you, so... The only negative correlation for this situation would be choice one. Cool? Very cool. Realize it would also work if A went up and then B went down. Still negative. Alright. Here we go. Number two. Um, the sum of 8n squared minus 3n plus 10 minus 3n squared. Blah, 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 blah. Okay. So the first thing you need to remember is that sum is what? Is it plus, minus, divide, multiply? Uh, did I say everything? Yeah. Which one is it? Well, sum is addition. So don't forget that. So we are adding these two functions together. That's not horrible. We can add functions together. We add things in life. 6 plus 6 is 12. So let's see. 8n squared minus 3n plus 10. Right? And we're going to add it. So plus negative 3n squared minus 6n minus 7. And we're just going to add them up just like that. 10 minus 7 is 3, positive 3, minus 3 plus minus 6, right, is minus six, nine, 9n and Positive 8 plus minus 3 is 8, 7, 6, 5, n squared. That was insultingly easy for the algebra agents. Is that cool? Alright, here we go. Moving on. Which event is certain to happen? Gotta love these, right? This is free points for you guys. They said we want to make this test not horribly difficult, so we're gonna give you free points. Get some free points. So the first time, everyone walking into a room with red hair. It... Okay. Listen, guys. If you choose this choice, it's almost like you don't want to do well in this region. How the heck can you assure that everyone walking into a room has red hair? I've met maybe like four people in my entire life who have red hair. How can you assume that everyone walking to a room is right here? That's silly. Throw that out. Don't even read it. Throw it out. Let's take a look. Number two. All babies born in June will be males. Dude. Or dudette. I know a whole bunch of people who are chicks or girls that are born in June. How does that make sense? Out of here. The Yankees baseball team will win the World Series. You know, as much as I would say that this is probably going to happen because of for some reason, it always happens. The Yankees are a gangster team. That is not always going to happen. You can see that. So we're left with the sun rise to the east. Unless the apocalypse is coming and we're not going to make it to see tomorrow, it seems as the sun will always rise in the east. Is that cool? I don't think any of these are that hard. We can do some, some more of these if you guys get a little stuck. The sum. Um, write it in my comment section if you want to do more. Let's keep going. Check this out. Check my organization skills here. I put this in layers. Boop. So now we have four and five. This this question, not just five years old and Jacob, the priority is this four. The regions love this. And I can probably 101, maybe 102 percent guarantee that this question will be on your regions. Hands down. Not this exact question, but you will probably see ages and you'll have to do this. So I'm going to walk you through this because 
Some of you may think this is a very easy question, and that's great for you guys, but I can see why people would struggle. I struggled with this question when I was in algebra, so let's try to do this together. I just wish my thing weren't freezing. This damn program recording my screen is horrible. Alright, so first off, we see that there are two people we're talking about. What is this? It can't be edited. Oh, obviously. There you go. Nudge is the first person. Jacob is the second. Does everyone see that? So we have two people. So this is part one, so we don't have to do let statements and stuff, but I'm going to show you let statements so that you can kind of see how it is. All right. So we want to say let, right? So if this was a part two question, you want to make sure you do this. We're going to say let n equal, not just nudge, because n is not just nudge, n is nudge's age. Okay? And the second person is J. So let J equals not just Jacob, but what about Jacob? Jacob's age. All right? Make sure you put that, because they love to take off point. N is not Nodge. J is not Jacob. I mean, you don't see Jacob walking around as a giant J. No, that's not what it is. J is Jacob's age. Okay? And N is Nodge's age. A lot of people forget that, and they lose silly points, because if they see that, you know, the Regents teacher is going to say, Oh, yeah? N is just Nodge? Bloop! Okay, so don't, don't let that happen to you. All right? Don't let that happen to you. N is not Aj, J is not Jacob, N is Nodge's age, J is Jacob's age. Alright, we got those two people, and we see that there's two sentences here. And usually, usually, not always, realize what I'm saying, usually, that is an indication that we'll have to set up two equations, which kind of makes sense because we have two variables. And you remember, while learning in class, you can't you can't correctly solve for a variable if you have two variables with one equation. You need at least the same amount of equations as variables. So since we have two variables, we're going to need two equations if we want to fully solve this question. So here we go. Nodge is five years old and Jacob. So that means that Nodge, Nodge is H, which is N, is going to be five years older than Jacob. He's going to be Jacob's age. What do you think I'm going to have to put here? A plus five. Right? Nodge's age is five years older than Jacob. We didn't multiply by five, we're just adding five on top of Jacob's age. Um, so that takes care of our first sentence. I'm going to underline this in blue so you know that corresponds to our blue sentence. Our next one, the product of their ages is 84. We're going to make this a sentence. We're going to make the sentence a separate equation. So if the product of their ages, do you remember what product is? Hopefully you do. A product is multiplication. So that means that if we multiply Nodj and Jacob's ages together, if we multiply Nodj's and Jacob's ages together, we should get 84. That's not horrible. Now it's just a matter of writing it in mathematical form. So we multiply two things together, so it's going to be n, j, right? You can write it as that. You can put a dot in the middle. You can put, um, you can write it like this. Oh god, really? Are you kidding me? You can write it with parentheses around them, any way you want to, just know that it's n times j is equal to 84. And these are our two equations. n is equal to j plus 5, and nj is equal to 84. Alright, so now we have these two things. These two things are called, if you remember from algebra class, it starts with an s. I'll write it over here. It's called psi 
instantaneous equations right and simultaneous equations are where we have two equations with the same variables in both and we can solve for n and j simultaneously because we have two equations with the same variables and we learn two ways to solve them we can use the addition method or we can use the substitution method all right so you should be familiar with both i mean the regions they they hold you responsible for both the addition and the substitution method addition has a bunch of names now um it's the addition method uh it, it, there's a whole bunch of, well there's multiple names for it not a whole bunch but we're going to call it the addition method um for that i think it's also called the elimination method if i'm not mistaken so we're going to put that in parentheses but if you google Elimination. Did I spell elimination? I don't even know. I think it's an I here. Elimination. Um, if you Google addition method for simultaneous equations, you'll get how to do it. But you shouldn't have to Google it, because I'm going to show you. Alright, but we're going to use a substitution method here. Right? And the substitution says, substitution method says, that we're going to take one of these two equations, and we're going to solve for a variable. Right? Rule of thumb is that you solve for the easier to solve for a variable. So these are both pretty much equally easy to solve for a variable. So we can do it to anyone. But we want to make sure that when we do this, we solve an equation for the easier variable. So if you have like one equation that's like and the other equation is like n equals 2 plus j, you obviously know that you're going to solve, or n is already solved for you because n is equal to whatever. So in this case, n is already solved for us. n is equal to j plus 5. So we got off easy. We got off easy. We don't have to do any solving. All we have to do is look at it and say, hey, that's cool. We're going to substitute n in for anywhere we see n here with j plus 5. You see that? Because n is the same thing. That's what equality means. n is the same thing as saying j plus 5. Guys, if you already know how to do this, you can fast forward through my uh, through my video because we're gonna have a lot more, or a couple more um, questions. But this is pretty much targeted for people who weren't really, um, who aren't really comfortable with simultaneous equations, who weren't comfortable with the both methods of solving them. So don't feel like you have to stay here and listen to this explanation if you already know how to solve this, or if you already know um, what's going on here. Just move ahead. Right, move ahead. But I'm going to try to give a full explanation so the people who don't really get it. Alright, so we already know this. So it's n equals j plus 5, right? And the equality says that n is the same thing as saying j plus 5. So anytime we see n, anytime we see n, we can just plug in j plus 5 in this equation. So I'm going to write it in blue so you guys see. Anytime we see n, anytime we see n, we're going to put j plus 5. n, j plus 5. And then we can't say anything about j, right? So j stays the same. We can't put j equals j plus 5 because it's not. n is equal to j plus 5. And that's all going to be equal to 80. Four. So look at this now. Check this out. We have one equation with only one variable. All it has are j's in it. We have no more n. So now we can solve for j. And this may be confusing to some people because it's like, oh my god, what do I do here? But look, all we have to do is make sure we take the j and distribute. And distribute. Okay, so the first term we get, I'm going to write this in a new color so you don't get confused, we get j squared, because j times j is j squared, plus 5j, right, because j times 5 is 5j, does that look 5, 5, 5, 
j equals 84. Okay, do you remember what we take from here? Let's bring it over here. Let's bring it in. j squared plus 5j equals 84. So if you remember now, um, this is looking like a polynomial, right? More precisely, a quadratic. And in quadratics, the regents love to do this, right? Not only are you testing our ability to write equations, not only are you testing our ability to solve simultaneous equations, they are also testing our ability to factor. So, 3 and 1 here. 3 and 1. So this is a great question. So what we're going to do is we want to get one side equal to 0. And it's easy if we could just subtract 84 from both sides. Well, on the left-hand side, we're going to get j squared plus 5j, because those are not, nothing's happening to them, minus 84. And this side, the 84 is canceled, so we're just left with 0. Alright, and now it just comes down to factoring. So, if you recall point you should pause it and try to factor it by yourself and then see if you get the right answer but let's do it together so what we are looking for we know that it's a j squared term so we know that we can put j here and we can put a j here cool we know that here we're looking for two numbers that can multiply to this last number, multiply to minus 84, negative 84, and add to positive 5. So what you can do is you can list out factors of 84, right? So what do we have? We have, um, I think 48, uh, no, no, sorry, 42 and 2. Right? One of them has to be negative. So it's either negative 2 and 42 or positive 2 and negative 42. Right? They both give us negative 84. And you can list all the factors, all the factors. We know this one doesn't work because when you add them, right? Because remember, it's to add to 5. 42 plus negative 2 is positive 40. That's not this. Negative 42 plus positive 2. I'm sorry, this was positive 40, this is negative 40. None of those give you positive 5. So I'll give you the factors to save some time. But the factors that we're looking for are um, 12. And take a second to look it over, see if you can think about what the next, what the, uh, what the next factor is. But it's 12 and... Seven, okay? So 12 times 7 is 84. 12 minus 7 is 5. We want the 5 to be positive, so that means we want to put the positive sign with the bigger number. Good. Positive 12 times negative 7 is negative 84. Positive 12 plus negative 7 is positive 5. That's our two factors. Last step, I promise. Last step, we want to solve for the two variables now. So we do something they call teeing off. And all that means is to draw a line. This is supposed to be a line, not some type of weird squiggly shit. J plus 12 equals 0. J minus 7 equals 0. We solve for j, so we subtract 12 on both sides. j is equal to minus 12. This side, j is equal to 7. Positive 7, right? Because we add 7, add 7. 
someone cannot be negative years. You cannot be negative 12 years old. So, boom. Reject. Cannot be an answer. Ain't nobody want that. So we know that J... What was J's name? We know that Jacob is seven years old. Awesome. Right? Now, what is the question asking for? Is it asking for Jacob? They're asking for Jacob? They're asking for Nodj. Well, we go back and we see, oh, Nodj is easy. Nodj's age is equal to Jacob's age plus five. So, if Jacob is seven, Nodj is going to be equal to, plug it back in here, 7 plus 5 is 12. Naj has to be 12 years old. And there you have it. Naj is 12. That's it. Not too hard. Let me zoom out a little bit so you guys can see all the work for that one. In case you wanna look at it, you know what I mean? Why do I zoom out of this thing? Give me some zooming, baby. There you go. Hopefully you guys can still see that. That's all the work we did right there. It looks crazy, but as you can see, it wasn't that crazy. And We'll try one more. We'll do number five together. And then in the next video, we'll continue from five. We'll continue from six. Here we go. Number five. Let me zoom back in. What the? How much did that zoom? All right. Uh, right there. Number five. Okay. Marie. Marie is a stamp collector. Good for Marie. That is going to happen. Marie has a collection of 58 stamps. Not too bad. If she buys S stamps each week for W weeks, which expression represents the total number of stamps that she will have? Let's check it out. Marie currently has a collection of 58 stamps. She buys S stamps each week for W weeks weeks. Which expression represents that? What we're going to do is we are going to rewrite the exact expression with numbers and see if we can do it because a lot of times letters confuse people. Letters confuse me sometimes. Letters confuse everybody because who wants to add an S and a W together? That's not cool. We want to add like a 5 and a 2 together, not an S and a W. So let's try to replace some things with numbers and then we'll see if it works out. Marie currently has a collection of 58 stamps if she buys S stamps. So instead of S, we're going to say Marie bought 10 stamps. Okay? So she buys S stamps. She bought 10 stamps each week for W weeks. Well, she was buying 10 stamps for 10 weeks. Why not? Right? We want to know the total number of stamps she will have. Well, now it's pretty easy here. Because now it's just an elementary school problem. If, um, if someone buys stamps every week for 10 weeks, we know how to find it out. So we're going to say she bought 10 stamps for 10 weeks. So we're going to multiply the two together, right? She bought 10 stamps per week. Times. Um, 10 weeks. Right, the weeks cancel out and we are left with 100 stamps. 
So that's cool. So we know that in order to find out how many stamps she gets from all the stamps that she buys, we're going to multiply S and W together, right? We multiplied S and W together. So we know that our answer should have an S and a W multiplied together. So this has an S and W, this has S and W, this has an S plus W, it can't be that, and this is S plus W, it can't be that. So we, we've narrowed it down to 1 plus 2. There's one more thing we have to look at, and that's how many stamps we started out with. If she started out with no stamps, then the answer would be 100. But she didn't start out with 100. I mean, she didn't start out with nothing. She started out with 58 stamps. So at the end, she'll have all the stamps she bought, but she didn't do anything to the stamps that she originally had. My nose is itching. Oh my god, that's why you probably see me keep looking at this. Going up. That means at the end, she doesn't just have 100. She has 100 plus her original 58. So at the end, she should have 158 stamps. This is not right then. You can't multiply the amount of stamps she started out with. No. You have to add the amount of stamps she started out with with all the stamps that she bought. Cool? So that was the first five questions of the regions. That wasn't bad, right? That wasn't bad at all. So I hope you liked it. If you liked it, feel free to subscribe to the Happy Banana Institute. I mean, we're going to be making a lot more. I have a few calculus things up there. I'll be making some more stuff. Um, and I'm going to finish up this regions. I have all the other region stuff. I have all the other questions. Check this out. If I go to layer 3, boop, that's 6 and 7. If I go to layer 4, boop, that's 8 and 9. If I go to layer 5, boop, that's number 10. So we could. Layer 1 is what we did. So I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the questions. And I'm going to show you how to do everything. Just not now, because i got to go. And i got to do stuff. i got to go eat something. Famished. I don't know. I'll probably eat something. Go to the bathroom. Stuff like that. So, if you have any questions, leave them in the comment section. If you don't have any questions, don't leave it in the comment section. If you want to say hi to me, leave it in the comment section. If you want to say that you hate me, I would prefer you don't leave it in the comment section, but I mean, if you're if you're really compelled to say you hate me, leave it in the comment section. Um, if you like this, click the like button. If you want to see more videos, click the subscribe button. Um, and if you want to see something that I didn't go over, or if you want to see something more thoroughly explained, like simultaneous equations, um, we didn't do the substitution method, I mean, we didn't do the elimination method or the addition method. So if you want to see that, comment it to me. And if you want to see anything, anything at all explained more, even if you want to see something that wasn't in this video, if you want to see anything in algebra related, leave it in the comment section because this is this is free tutoring. You know what I mean? I mean, that doesn't come by too often. So you might as well take advantage of the Happy Banana Institute. I mean, take advantage of him while he's still happy. And other than that, I hope you guys have a great day. And um, see you in my next vid. Peace out, everybody.